on Apple's Monster Quarter. We are joined right now by David Garrity, his principal at GVA Research. David has more than 20 years experience researching, advising, and managing companies in the tech sector. Always glad to have him on with us. David, thanks so much for coming in. Good morning. So I'm reading here, out of 1,500 women surveyed in Phones for You Limited, 54% say they would be more likely to date a man with an iPhone. Have you been doing research on this on the street? Um, it using the iPhone? It certainly shows that the product is very hot and from that standpoint certainly assists in terms of its 18 to 40 year old demographic and to the extent that that survey seems to have been coming out of Europe it helps to explain the fact that Apple sales in Europe were up about 63 percent year over year which very surprising for a geography which arguably seem to be in worse economic shape than North America and it also shows at the same time that Apple's plans to roll out to a more global footprint certainly is getting very strong acceptance. So it seems I mean, to undisputably speak to the strength of the brands. Clearly, and, and to the extent that you see the company having gone out and formed partnerships with about 151 uh, wireless service providers in about 88 countries, we're still in a process right now where you're going to start to see uh, that channel get filled up. And to the extent that we obviously are talking more about the world here as Apple's oyster, in a way, uh, we certainly can see legs for the company going through 2010 into 2011. David, how is it that the iPhone continued to be so strong, setting a new record for shipments this quarter when everybody's coming around to the idea that we're going to see a new phone this summer? And uh, just the past few days, we got glimpses of it on Gizmodo.com. They managed to get their hands on a prototype of the 4G iPhone out in Silicon Valley. Certainly. I mean, the, the expectation is that we we're going to have this new phone coming out in June or a replacement as people were speculating for the 3GS. Um, you know, to the extent that the product isn't necessarily going to be released simultaneously worldwide, it said that there would be a certain period of time between the actual announcement or expectation of the product and actually it being available. And as a result, consumers are finding the form factor that the iPhone offers uh, is sufficiently attractive that they decided to move in advance. I mean, this seems to speak to Apple's larger strategy, which is that if I like the iPhone, then I will definitely buy a Mac the next time I'm going to buy a computer. I mean, this kind of translation seems to be working out for them. Very much so. I mean, to the extent if you talk about the traffic that they're seeing in terms of their own retail stores and the kind of pull through that you're getting, uh, the people who were buying Macs being roughly 50 percent of them of the buyers of Macs had not previously owned a Mac and by and large they had been coming into an Apple store to touch and feel the product. The retail strategy works well and the company's rolling out that retail strategy worldwide. You know, I heard the other day that uh, somebody say, I might have read it, that the iPod is dead. I guess it's because of all the excitement over the iPad, but the iPod, there were almost 10 million iPods sold in this quarter. I guess it's not dead. How strong do you think the iPad, iPod rather, can continue to be? I think the iPod's very important. I think that the fact that the company's coming out with a new version of it in September, obviously ahead of the year-end sh holiday shopping season, uh, illustrates its importance. And, and the importance primarily from a price point for the iPod is that most likely the first Apple product anyone is going to be owning worldwide is going to be an iPod. And over time, they will trade up to progressively more expensive products. Now, speaking of products, though, we talked about this deep tease from uh, Steve Jobs. They've got more extraordinary products in the pipeline this year. What on earth could Apple have in mind beyond a 4G iPhone? I think one product that they may very well likely have and haven't announced it as of yet is in the fourth quarter of 2010, most likely having a CDMA version handset, which will be released to Verizon Wireless here in the U.S. Verizon's got 90 million subscribers. Obviously, they haven't really been able to use the iPhone because it's been an AT&T wireless exclusive. But given the fact that you've sold 50 million iPhones so far worldwide, having the opportunity to go after Verizon Wireless's 90 million customers could be a big driver for Apple next year. Uh, one quick question before we go, David. One price target out there, $325. Where do you think Apple shares can go? I think 325 is a very good number. I think off of the expectations, earnings are growing at about a 16, 17% rate. Price to earnings growth of 1.5 gets you to 325. I think Apple could potentially trade higher. Wow, 325, that's 33% higher than yesterday's closing price. David Garrity joining us to talk about Apple's extraordinary results and the iPhone.